Good evening and welcome to Information Please, your Peoria Public Library on the air bringing you information both about the library and the community. My name is Stacy Peterson, I'm guest hosting for Trisha Nowak tonight and together again my partner in programming, I have Carla Wilkinson. Hi Carla, how are you doing? Hello, I'm very good. Good, the last time we were in this studio we had the old studio. We did. We had yes. turtlenecks on. Yeah, it was cold. It was cold. We <laughs> never thought that summer would get here. No, but it has. It has. And what a great time. Before we start talking about the theme of the hour, it is June. We are talking about summer reading. Yes, we are right in the thick of it. So you should all be signed up. Okay. Everyone should be signed up by now. And so now the important thing is just to go to the library every week and log your hours. Now, can you go to any library? Well, you should go to the one where you signed up because that's where your log sheet is. There if you go. go to another library, we might get you confused and have more than one sheet. And it's just easiest if, if you go to the one where you signed up. And we want you to get credit, whether you're a little yes. kid reading or an adult reading. We want those hours to get in there because we have some important check-in points. What's coming up? We do. Well, week five, if you have read all five weeks mm -hmm. up to that point, you get a ticket to a Peoria Chiefs baseball game. Perfect. And it's just that easy. That's all you have to do to get the ticket. Week six, if you've read six weeks, you get a pass to our party at the end of the summer. And this year we are going to the Riverfront Museum for the first time. That is going to be exciting. So we've got the party at the Riverfront Museum. Yes. Will other people be allowed into the Riverfront Museum at that time? No, it's just for summer readers. So it's a VIP party. A VIP exclusive Yes, Excellent. we'll have the whole museum open for our summer reading participants. The giant screen theater, the planetarium, the Ripley's Believe It or Not exhibit. Mm -hmm. So it should be a really fun time. I can tell you from a first-hand knowledge of a middle-aged woman that the Ripley's Believe It or Not exhibit is fantastic. And mm -hmm. when I recently visited it, I saw people from all ages, little bitties, all the way up to full-grown adults. They, our attendees will be in for such a treat to be able yes. to play. It's an interactive experience, this Ripley's part. So what a wonderful time to come in, enjoy the museum, all because you love to read. So that's yes. very exciting. Um, but that's not really why we brought you here tonight. Correct. Um, Carla, one of the things that we really love about you is that you are kind of our resident Brit Lit Scholar fan. <laughs> and uh, whether that's movies or books, most notably the Downton Abbey event. Mm -hmm. um, and what we have coming up in July is something that is truly spectacular and unique. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I'm kind of thinking of how we're going to approach this because when it first came to me, when you first started mentioning this, it's uh, based around this, we're going to have this Joe Baker, a special visitor author, and she's got a book that is told from a very different perspective. And at first it kind of reminded me a little bit of these parody novels like Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter, or Jane mm -hmm. Austen, Pride and Prejudice with Zombies. But this mm -hmm. is so much more serious than that, maybe more literary yes. than that. Tell us about Joe Baker, who is coming to visit us at Maine. Right. Joe Baker wrote a book called Longbourn, and Longbourn is a companion to Pride and Prejudice. It's the story told from the perspective of the servants who run the house where the Bennett family lives. And one of the, the lines, I just started reading the book, one of the lines in the book says that if Elizabeth Bennett had to wash her own petticoats, maybe she wouldn't get them so dirty. <laughs> in Pride mm -hmm. and Prejudice, Elizabeth is always taking long walks and yes. getting her petticoats muddy. And you never think about someone has to wash those petticoats. Right. And so it's the lives of these servants who keep the household running for the Bennett family. And you get little glimpses of the Bennett family here and there, but it's mostly about the servants. So it's upstairs, downstairs without the upstairs. Basically, kind yes. Of. There's a little okay. bit of upstairs, but most of it's downstairs. Now, <laughs> what, Joe, what Joe Baker is doing could be considered pretty, pretty controversial. Those Jane Austen fans mm -hmm. are passionate yes. about the writing. We're, we're talking now about toying a little bit with classic literature. Yes. Um, but she's actually on her way. We're kind of a pit stop to someplace else. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes, she is going to be going to the Jane Austen Festival in Louisville, okay. which will be in mid-July. And this is a, I think it's the largest festival um, 
in North America, I'm sure, I know there's one in Bath, England, that's probably a little bit bigger. Right. <laughs> uh, but it's a very large festival. I don't know why it ended up in Louisville, but that's where it is. And um, she was kind enough to make some time in her schedule to stop here in Peoria. Amazing. And talk about her book with us. So, so we're actually going to get to sneak preview what the people in Louisville are going to be paying big money to go see and participate in. But yes. she's coming to Peoria first. Yes, and it will be a free event it's for free, everyone. Free event. Now, yes. so that talks a little bit more. Let's get into logistics a little bit. Mm -hmm. When is it going to be? It's July 14th. That's it's a, a Monday. It's a Monday, yes, at 6.30 in the evening at the main library. Okay. The main library does close at 6, but we're keeping the doors open a little bit late that day for this program. Okay. So it will be in our auditorium, and we'll maybe have some light refreshments ahead of time, and okay. um, maybe some themed decorations. And, All right. Uh, anyone who came to the Downton Abbey program um, saw what we did there. It yes. won't be quite as extravagant as that. Right. Um, but we want to give our patrons um, an experience, a, a nice experience. Yes. So that brings in some interesting points just from a housekeeping perspective that we need to kind of address. Mm -hmm. um, the library normally closes at six, mm -hmm. but this is 6.30. So I'm assuming our patrons need to get there at a certain time. We would like you to get there before the program starts, certainly. Okay. Um, if you're running a little bit late, I don't know that we will keep the doors right. unlocked for people who come in at 7 o'clock. Right. You might not make it. We're also taking reservations ahead of time. Okay. You don't have to pay for your ticket, but we'd like to know how many people to expect. That way we know if you're coming, we know to look for you. Um, and let you in when you get there. Now, how would one reserve their place, their free place at this party? You can call me okay. at 497-2150. Okay. And I will just mark you down. And uh, we also have books available for sale at the program. Okay. I know you like a book in Peoria Heights. They're a great independent bookstore. They are. Uh, they have agreed to come to the program and sell books. So if you want to buy her book, Longborn, and have it signed at that time, you can. That's wonderful. And Mary Beth has been such a wonderful shop owner, person to work with. She certainly yes. provided books for us at other events. Yes. So this is really a win-win. Mm -hmm. People will she have a good time. She did not hesitate at all to agree to come. That does not surprise me. <laughs> now, this book, Longborn, is really going to probably break Joe Baker into the American market, but it's not yes. her only book. Right. She's written a few books before, okay. but really, uh, those have really only been published in the UK. Okay. So we're not quite as familiar with her works as we are of some more popular authors, but this book has really um, gotten her noticed here in the US. And the other books, are they also historical in nature? Is she adapted other famous authors, or are they more just fiction-based, her own I creation? believe they're just regular fiction. I don't believe they're based on anything else. So this is kind of a unique book. Yeah. Um, and like you said, it's not like those parody novels or there are people who have written sequels to Pride and Prejudice that just aren't along the same lines of the original material. Right. This is this is very good. It's written in much the same style as Jane Austen, not quite as formal. It's okay. a little easier to read for the common reader good. than um, Jane Austen's English. But it's still, you can, you can tell the great amount of research that went into this book. Well, it sounds like Jo Baker is also quite the scholar. She did her undergraduate work at Oxford, from yes. what I could understand. Um, then she moved to Belfast with the intention of getting her master's in Irish writing, <laughs> and then she wound up getting her PhD. So we're dealing with somebody who is quite educated, but also yes. clearly loves to write, yes. um, as well as, as mm -hmm. read the classics. Now, if it's somebody like me who reads a lot of contemporary American literature, would I be able to pick up this book and and understand it without being really, I mean, it's been many years since I've read Pride and Prejudice. Can the average person read it and understand it? I think so. There's a little bit of mystery, some more contemporary themes there. I'm not very far into the book, so I won't be giving anything away, but there is okay. a new um, hired man, a new manservant that comes into the household, and there's a little bit of mystery surrounding him about where he came from and, and why he's there. And so it's it's a little um, more understandable. It, it doesn't touch a lot on the story of Pride and Prejudice okay. because I don't know that the servants would have known exactly what was going on upstairs. There are some 
little snippets of what the Bennett family is doing, but okay. it very much focuses on the servants in the house. So you don't need to necessarily worry about reading Pride and Prejudice to pick up on some nuances that that right. might be in there. Mm -hmm. You can certainly read this and, and with this contemporary angle get a lot out of it already. Yes. Um, well, that all sounds fantastic. She, I do know that in reading some of the reviews online, this book has been very well received. It has been, yes. And I think there's, you know, Pride and Prejudice is hugely popular in the United States. Yes. We have the um, Colin Firth adaptation there was, of course, he stole my heart. Yes, yeah. there was a giant statue of him coming out of a lake that has been making the rounds of England. <laughs> and um, then there's the Kira Knightley version that came out a few years ago mm -hmm. on film. So it's something that we Americans are very familiar with. And so this um, being similar to that book mm -hmm. is um, very popular just because of the popularity of Pride and Prejudice. Certainly. And again, you know, at any of our library locations, if people really enjoy reading Longbourn and they want more out of it, they can get those DVDs with Keira Knightley or the series with Colin Firth, or they can get Pride and Prejudice and Zombies and read what the parody's all about, mm -hmm. or they can go back to the original works of Jane Austen mm -hmm. on audio or on regular print, mm -hmm. or even on our eBooks that we have now. Right. And you can really get all the Jane Austen that you want. You can, out yes. Of this. So that also brings up, since I brought up ebooks, I think it's important to bring up to some of our viewers that we have another avenue now for ebooks. Maybe we could touch on that a little bit. Yes, um, sure. For a long time, we've been using one particular mm -hmm. horse in the game, and now right. mm -hmm. there's another one. Yes, we've had Overdrive for several years now, and mm -hmm. you can download ebooks and audiobooks through Overdrive. And now we have what's called e read Illinois, and this was made, made possible by a grant that the state library received. So pretty much every library in the state now has access to ebooks. Excellent. Yes, and um, you can access it on our website. There's a link right there on the homepage to eRead Illinois. Okay. And it's only ebooks right now. There are no audiobooks available through this service. There may be in the future. But it's just another way to get more titles okay. if you have an e-reader. You can also read these on your computer. If you don't have an e-reader and you don't mind reading on your computer, you can great? do that as well. Isn't yes. that great? So what are some other differences that we're dealing with? I mean, I know that um, from the looks of them both, they look a little bit different. And, and certainly those people who love audiobooks can continue to use OverDrive. Mm -hmm. Can I check out from both at the same time? You can, yes. Good. OverDrive has a two book limit. Okay. E-Read Illinois has a three book limit. So there's Perfect. the potential to have five ebooks checked out at a time if you're using both services. Excellent. There are a few differences. E-Read Illinois is not as friendly to Kindles as it is to some of the other readers just because of the format of the books. Okay. It is a different look. It's a different interface. So you're not going to be able to go right in and, and expect to see what you see in OverDrive if you're right. more comfortable with OverDrive. So it might take some getting used to. You can call the library or come in and we'll help you. We'll walk you through it for the first time or first two times or whatever it takes. And a lot of times we have handouts if, if maybe yes. you are more comfortable taking mm -hmm. it home and playing a little bit. I know that I like to use OverDrive for audio and those two titles for audio. And I like using um, the other system, the eRead Illinois, especially for cookbooks. I've found that the nonfiction translation of photos coming into my tablet it is just unparalleled. It's beautiful. Yes, there's a, a new format through e Illinois, which is called Blio, B-L-I-O, <coughs> mm -hmm. and it is very graphic heavy. Mm -hmm. So picture books, cookbooks, things that have big, vibrant pictures are going to look really beautiful through mm -hmm. Blio. And the, the picture books especially, kids like interactive things, and they do. the Blio app will read the book to them so kids who are learning to read can follow along and have it read to them. Now if they're doing, if you've got kids who are doing summer reading and they're using this Blio app with this audio uh, or with, with something being read to them, does that count for summer reading? Absolutely. Excellent. So log in those hours. Yes. Log in the, if you've got somebody maybe who's um, got some vision issues and they're using their overdrive for audio, those hours count. Come out and yes. use our services. Everybody mm -hmm. can in, enjoy the love of reading through any of these multiple programs. So that's very good news. One more quick question. I know that on OverDrive, we're allowed to pick our limit for how long we want a book checked out. Mm -hmm. What about on eRead Illinois? Absolutely, you can. Same thing. You can change, there's a, 
a slide, a button that slides to the left and the right, and you can choose how many days you would like to check it out for. Perfect. And it also seems to me in using it that if you don't like one of the programs, they are different enough that I think that we can cover everybody who has got a library card. Somebody will probably like one more than the other. One might seem a little easier to use than the other. Yes. Or you can always use both. Yes. Excellent. So we're caught up on the fantastic Joe Baker event. Again, mm -hmm. let's repeat that. That's July 14th. July 14th. It's a Monday at 630 at the okay. main library. If you want to reserve your free ticket, you can call me at 497-2150. Excellent. No pay for parking because it's after 6 o'clock. That's right. People can come in and park in our glorious, well-lit lot and enjoy a lovely Monday evening. And, and what is the kind of schedule of events? Will she be signing after? I believe so, yes. Okay, so people can come there a little early, hopefully enjoy some light refreshments, find a good seat. Buy a book. Choose, buy a book, mm -hmm. wander the lower level two. Again, that's lower level two, two yes. floors below street level. Yes, we will be below stairs. Below stairs, we will be below stairs, <laughs> but accessed by elevator if you yes. care to access it that way. Yes. So that's lovely to know too. So a few other things that we have going on in July. Mm -hmm. Since we're already talking about Maine, I will mention that the art gallery will once again be awash in art. We will be switching over from our Lincoln and the Civil War mm -hmm. exhibit, which has been fantastically successful. We've seen a lot of people, young and old, coming in to look at Lincoln, mm -hmm. and our librarians in local history have done a beautiful job with our graphics department putting up newsprint of Lincoln's visits to our area. Mm -hmm. um, but in July, we have the Illinois Art League. So that's comprised of members all over the state. They're back again for their annual member show. And we will be having a reception, I believe, on, I want to say the 18th, but that date could be wrong. Check our website. So that will be Maine. What else do we have going on? We've got that. Let's go up to, let's talk about summer reading programs. Because yes. we are bringing in the dogs, and people love it when we bring in real dogs. We are, yes. We, are. we have our pause to read programs, which are great programs for kids <clears throat> who are maybe reluctant readers or kids who love reading. Mm -hmm. This is through the Humane Society. They have trained dogs who will sit still while you read to them. They are good listeners. They are, yes. And it's just nice to curl up with, with your hand on a fluffy dog reading a book. So these We'll have a program at every one of our locations we for will. these. And uh, people who are interested need to check our website because you do have to call and reserve a spot and you call the Humane Society yep. so that they know how many dogs to send to the program. And it's important because the dogs have their own trading cards. And you get, they do. you know, once yes. you're done reading, you get a little card saying that that's who you read to. Yes. So the website, as always, is the number one way to find the most up-to-date information. Mm -hmm. And maybe for those um, children and adults who don't want to be around live dogs, we have opportunities to see both paper mache dogs and photos of dogs at all of our library locations. We do. So, And the ahead. photos of dogs are some of the dogs that you can read to. Yes. So you might see some familiar faces. You might see, and they've got their name tags, they've got they names. Mm -hmm. They will be, I'm fairly certain at the end of summer, local celebrities. Yes. So, mm -hmm. you know, they, they love to listen. They might give you um, a paw to graph. I don't know. Yes. We'll kind of see how that goes. So. <laughs> It's really interesting. These dogs are so well behaved and, and, you know, around little people, sometimes dogs have a tendency to get a little skittish. They don't know mm -hmm. what's going to go on. But we are having a special program that's going to teach people about yes. these dogs. Talk yes, about it. Yes, we do. I can't recall the exact date. Maybe you have that information. July 26th. July 26th. Yes, at Lakeview. Mm -hmm. That's a Saturday, I believe. We're going to have an adoption event first. We are. Oh my gosh, we are. But not at Lakeview. No. It's going to be at North Branch. Yes. And then in the afternoon, they're going to have a program at Lakeview that teaches you about the process these dogs go through to be trained for these types of things. Mm -hmm. All sorts of service dogs. You know, we have dogs that lead the blind, dogs that um, help people who are maybe handicapped in some way, and these dogs who children can read to. So yeah. companion animals, service anim animals. They go through training, and we may not think about the kind of training they have to go through mm -hmm. to get their certification. So this program will show us kind of behind the scenes about what these dogs 
have to learn. You know, dogs and, and cats, various animals are used so many times as companions, yes. not just people who have you know mobility issues, but people who've maybe gone through trauma of some sort or, or need assistance around the house. And mm -hmm. we frequently see people coming into the library, both who have companion dogs and who have dogs in training. And, and it's really interesting because children naturally gravitate towards any animal. The training dogs are generally wearing a vest, notifying that they're in training. And, yes. and the trainers are very gentle in directing the children away from touching or distracting the dog. Mm -hmm. But at that time, the trainers don't really have the time to tell the children what this process is. And yes. what a great time to bring in people of all ages so they can better understand how that process works and, and how these animals really help help our society on a larger level. Yes. So we're so pleased. We can't say enough good things about this mm -hmm. partnership yes. with the Humane Society. Um, on Monday nights, in addition to some of these other Pause to Read events, we're going to be showing animal-themed movies in the Mackenzie mm -hmm. Room. This is going to include, and I do not like to have any animal left out, Babe in the City, so we've got to have a pig, Never Cry Wolf, so it's about a man living in Alaska and actually learning to communicate with wolves. and. Everybody loves Disney, so the Aristocats will be the mm -hmm. last film that we're showing for the Monday night movies. Um, Forest Park Nature Center. They're always bringing in some critters. They are. What they, are they doing this time? They do great programs. They do. Um, they're going to be doing programs for us at a couple of different locations, and they, they always are. bring in an animal, and I believe it has something to do with paws, tracking animals and the, the paw prints they leave. And mm -hmm. so they'll talk about that and they'll have some animals that maybe you can pet and mm -hmm. touch and see. And so they did a great program for us last year and it was very successful and, and very entertaining and educational. So we're excited to have them it back. Was. They always have at least one, if not two educators. They bring mm -hmm. several animals, some that you want to touch, some that you would rather they left at Forest right. Park in right. the nature. I wasn't excited about the tarantula. The tarantula I was not, but the ball python I really enjoyed. Yes. So, <laughs> you know, uh -huh. um, different strokes for different folks, but the Forest Park Nature Center people are just incredible, mm -hmm. um, and we really enjoy working with them. Again, for Music in the Mackenzie, we're going to bring that back again. It's our monthly music program. I'll just give a a shout to the Eric Lambert Trio. He is a singer-songwriter, he does all kinds of music, but keeping in the vein of music in the Mackenzie, he will be doing acoustic guitar work. So check the web calendar for the date on that. Now in the past, we have had people who have balanced ladders on their chin in the yes. Mackenzie room. We've had a woman, Laura Ernst, who did kind of acrobatics out on the lawn at Lincoln. Yes. We're bringing in a juggler. We are. His name is Jason Collum. Yes. And his program is called See a Juggler, Be a Juggler. So there is some learning involved. Excellent. Kids can learn how to juggle. He has great methods to teach kids how to juggle. And then he does a big finale that involves balancing three feet of blocks and a glass of water on his chin. Oh my gosh. Doesn't spill any of the water. I don't believe so, no. But I don't want to give too much away. Okay. Because it's a big finale. It should be a really fun program, and he's going to be doing two programs for us at a couple of different locations. Great. Do we know what locations? Have we secured those locations yet? I believe it's North and Lincoln, so we're covering both ends of town. Okay. Excellent. North and Lincoln, same day. Yes. Website. We'll have a link to his website. Yes. Um, let's talk a little bit about Lakeview, because we haven't talked so much about Lakeview. You've had a very successful book program there at Lakeview that I feel is really unique to our community. We've had some book clubs that have been going for a long time that focus on nonfiction or fiction, but you have really taken the horns of a genre mm -hmm. that you adore. Let's talk about what you're doing over there. Yes, I have a YA for adults book club. So it's young adult literature for adults who enjoy reading young adult literature. And I am one of them, I'm not ashamed to say it. There's some really great literature in the young adult genre. And so we've been meeting for a year and a half now, I believe. We started in January of 2013, so we're still going strong. There are about eight of us who meet monthly and discuss books, and we have some really great discussions. And sometimes treats are involved. Yes, I started trying to have themed treats, and it's kind of gotten uh, gotten carried away a little bit now that I feel the pressure. Yes. <laughs> um, so we, we do have themed treats and we just have a great discussion. 
a lot of people might think that young adult books don't have any substance to them. What is there? What can you possibly discuss? But there's so much to talk about. And mm -hmm. Several of us work in libraries, and so we we have kind of a different perspective on it. And what does it mean that something is young adult literature? So we right. talk about those things or the kind of issues that we're dealing with, and we have a really fun time and and have some great discussion. And we certainly welcome new members to our group. What's interesting, I think about the genres, it's very easy if you're not familiar with it uh, to write it off as being fluff. Yes. You know, you think young adults and adult wouldn't like it. The topics are relevant. The topics are serious. The topics are very emotional at times. I've found a lot of the subject matter to be really dark because it starts to deal with issues that are quite um, quite pertinent to what goes on in anybody's life, no matter what the age. And the one thing that I find most interesting about this specific book club, most book clubs lay out their year in advance, but the field of young adult literature is changing so quickly and so many books are getting published. Mm -hmm. You do it a little bit differently. You do six months at a time. I do, yes. I picked the books for January through June, mm -hmm. and then I waited a few months to pick July through December because the the genre is changing so much. Mm -hmm. What's popular now is not going to be popular in a few months, and things are constantly being released. There are also awards that are announced every year. The American Library Associ Association gives out awards, and uh, so I wanted to pick some books from that list as well to see you know, what is being awarded and why is it being awarded. So we'll be yeah. reading the Prince Honor Book. That is the award the highest award given in young adult literature, oh the, the Prince Award. We'll be reading the winner of that award, I believe in September, August or September. And it's called Midwinter Blood. And I don't know a lot about it other than I believe it, it's from the perspective of lots of different people. So this is really the chance to not only get involved in an interesting and contemporary book club, but you're reading items that are literally hot off the press. We are, so yes. So that is wonderful and very unique to many of our offerings. And we also have other book clubs at all of our locations. So yes. you can catch up on all of our programs at PeoriaPublicLibrary.org, or you can sign up for a digital edition of our Passages newsletter, or sign up for a hard copy, or pick it up at any of our library locations or the Bookmobile. But thanks very much for joining us. Carla, thanks very much for being You're our welcome. guest. And we'll see you next week on Information Please.